So I had an interesting support uh, conversation with a customer today that was using Superbase. And they were using it in an interesting way. They were building an app and the app used Superbase Jot authentication. And But they also had a demo mode where if the user wasn't signed in, they would get demo data back. And so they'd set up their uh, role level security policy that if there was no token, they got demo data. If there was a token, there wasn't. But they needed to use rate limiting, especially if they've got a demo mode, otherwise they could get hammered on their back end. So they had an interesting situation where they wanted to rate limit users with a jot in a certain way, and then rate limit users without a jot in a different way and asked, how would you do that in Zuplo? So let me show you how, it's really easy. So here I have a, a Superbase um, Jot policy, all configured. Um, uh, you can see I've, I've already set up my Superbase Jot secret. There's, we have tutorials and documentation on this. So if I call this with a valid Superbase Jot, I generated my Jot token using this little helper site we created called superbasejot.com. So just, let's grab that and get it, make sure it's fresh. Come in here, let's replace this and hit test. And there you go, I get a 200 okay. If I make that token bad somehow, then I'm gonna get a 401 and authorized and an invalid token as you can see. Um, so pretty easy, but they need to be able to call this API even if the user isn't authenticated, but in that case, they're gonna get demo data. So how would that work? Well, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually, um, change this policy and allow unauthenticated requests. So that means if there is no token, the request will still go through. So let's save that change. Wait for that to finish spinning so I know my save is made. And then let's test again. So let's test once with the token, great, 200 okay. And then test again, and still 200 okay. I get the data back. So it's working with or without a token. Now, the problem is if we drop in a rate limiter here, so let's add a rate limit um, we want to do user-based rate limiting for when there's a token. And for a user, let's say they're going to get, I don't know, four, four requests per minute. Um, and no, you can use fractional minutes here. So we could do in, you know, 0 0.1 or something uh, of a minute. So six seconds. Uh, click OK. I'm going to save that change. And I will now test this. Uh, let's test it with a, a header first. Authorization bearer. Uh, Paste in my token test, it's working, great. And then, then I'm getting 429 too many requests. So my rate limit is kicking in at the right level. If I delete that though, well I got a 200 okay, but I'm getting a, um, a 429 and that's kind of right, except now all of your demo users are sharing an anonymous user identity with the rate limiter. And that's not going to work. You, you basically want each, each anonymous user to be limited by something else other than the fact that they're anonymous. So what we really want to probably do there is do IP-based rate limiting for our anonymous users. And we have an IP-based um, rate limit policy, which we could drop in and would work great. But how do I make it dynamic between the two? It's actually pretty easy. So I'm going to delete this policy here. I'm gonna go over to policies.json. We're gonna create a new inbound policy. That's gonna be rate limiting. This is gonna be an IP-based rate limit. And for IP-based rate limiting, we're gonna do, I don't know, three, sorry, three requests per uh, minute. I click okay on that and let's give it a name. So let's call this IP rate limit. Okay, let's call this one user um, user rate limit. Okay. And then we're going to invoke these policies from code. So I'm going to go and write a custom module, uh, a custom inbound policy called choose rate limit. And I don't need the options. So I'm just going to change that to the never type because I'm not going to use it. Let's clean out these comments. And all we're going to do is to say if request.user, so if, the, if someone's authenticated, there'll be a request.user object then return a, a context.invoke inbound policy user rate limit. That was the name of that policy in the library. I need to pass in the request. Otherwise, I'm going to return context.invoke inbound policy um, 
IP rate limit, comma request. So I can programmatically invoke policies in my pipeline. These are awaitable if I wanted to deal with the response, but since I'm just, I can just return a promise, that's fine. Um, and then I'm gonna go and plug this in on my route, add a custom policy called choose rate limit. If you remember this had no options, so I can clear all of this out, I don't need it. Click okay, click save and I have completed my challenge. And I guess the way we can test this is very quickly, if I don't have a user, I think I should get three requests. One, two, three, four, I get 429. If I do have a user, and I'm gonna have to be fast here because I think I set it to six seconds. So let's see if we can do that fast enough. Burr, uh, space, paste in the JOT token. I should get four. One, two, three, for 429 too many requests. So there you go. You can see that it's behaving differently depending on whether there's a user or not and applying an IP-based rate limit or a user-based rate limit for the JOT token. You can do so much more with the programming here, but pretty easy, pretty nice.